questions? Now it's time to do proofs. If any of those proofs you can't do in 5152? Or anything? For the homework they do. For? 11. 11? 5211. All right. Uh, so we're going to play NIM. Normally the way NIM works in, in terms of a game is typically you would have like so many piles of objects and there's so many things that are in it. And then you can do things like take one, take two, take one entire pile, but you only can work with one pile at once. And the, the point of the game is don't be the last person, right? So if I would sit there and have, if I would do this game until all of a sudden I had one stone left, whoever's faced with that, you have to take something. You have to take one or more from one pile. If you're faced with one stone left, then whoever, take, whoever goes next is a loser. Right? That's how the typical game of NIM works, is that you have all these piles and start taking something right, from one pile at a time. You can take an entire pile if you want. Take all of pile one, take all of pile two as you go through it and try to make it so that you aren't the last person going. Well, what they're doing on this problem is they're doing a variation of it. And so we only have one pile. And... Inside of here are matches, and we've got, you know, it's piles of whatever. You have N stones. All right, these are Skittles, right? So I have N Skittles sitting here, and the rule is don't be the last one to take it, right? And except when we look at this is you can take, you have to take something, but they're only going to allow you to take one, two, or three. And so each time you play, You take one, two, or three. If you take all that is left, then you lose. And we're also going to assume that people who play aren't stupid, right? If I have three Skittles, you wouldn't take all three and lose, right? You would. Do, the smart thing would be to do what? If I see three Skittles, what would be the smart thing to do? Take two. Take two, and you let them face one, ha ha, you lose. All right? So we assume people are going to play smart. Now, the, the problem itself on number 11, so we have these end matches as we're going through here, so I might as well say one, two, up to N. They have this wording, using strong induction to show that if, play, if each player plays the best strategy possible, they're not stupid, really. The first player wins if n is equal to 4j, 4j plus 2, 4j plus 3 for some non-negative integer j, and the second player wins if the remaining is 4j plus 1 for some non-negative integer j. And you look at this and it's like, wow, this is kind of a weird way of saying it. But on the other hand, if, you know, player 1 is the person who's facing it, and if player 1 sees... So n is equal to, they say, 4j, n is equal to 4j plus 2, n is equal to 4j plus 3. On the other hand, if player 1 sees n is equal to 4j plus 1, if this happens, you can win. Player 1 wins. If this happens, player 1 loses. If I showed you 4j, which is really 4j plus 0, 4j plus 1, 4j plus 2, 4j plus 3, what does this look like from number theory? This ought to look familiar. Is this the division algorithm with all possible remainders? What spits out remainders? mod, right? 
So if I would look at this and say, well, wait a second, what this is really saying that is, if you take the amount of, say, Skittles, right, and you take the modulus, if the remainder is 1, you're going to be a loser. If the remainder is 0, 2, or 3, you have your winner if you play it correctly. Are we okay with that? So what this is saying is, is if we see this thing, and I would take, when I'm looking at this, this is really saying that if n mod 4, right? You divide it by 4. If you get 0, 2, or 3, that means you're going to win. If n mod 4 was equal to 1, you are going to lose. That's another way of thinking about this. Instead of this old as nj plus 1 and plus 2, let's think about it in terms of modulus to have an operator on it. Okay, so this is telling me what should happen if I play the game right. Well, typical things in mathematics. If you don't know what to do, start doing it. Right? Start playing the game. So I'm going to play this game, and I'm going to play it for small numbers. What's the smallest amount of things that you can have? One, right? So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of, let's play and see if, we see if the pattern works. Play. N equals one. Your player won. What happens? You lose, right? Player one takes it and loses. Is the formula, this is my formula. Does my formula work so far? What's 1 mod 4? 1 and I lost. Okay. N equal to 2. Your player won, but you're not stupid. What should you do? Player 1 takes 1, which does what? Leaves a 1 for player 2, and whoever faces a 1 is always going to lose. And so what I will do is say, player 1 takes 1, and then player 2 faces n equal to 1, hence player 2 loses, which means player 1 wins. All right, what about n equal to 3? What should player 1 do? Take 2. Player 1 takes 2. Player 2 gets n equal to 1, hence player 1 wins. What about n equal to 4? Take, take 3, which we're allowed to do, right? The rule is, for this game, we can take 1, 2, or 3. So, player 1, <laughs> take 3. Player 2 gets n equal to 1, hence player 1 wins. n equal to 5. All right, what do I know? For that entire block, does my rule work? What's 4 mod 4? 0. Zero. Uh, what is 3 mod 4? 3. three. What is 2 mod 4? 2. For every one of those, if you face it, what happens? You win. How do you win? It even tells you how to win. Right? You take away to force the other person into a losing position. Is everybody okay with that? N equal to 5. What's 5 mod 4? 1. That means if I face this, I need to, I'm probably, I probably, I have to be stuck into what type of position? Losing. Well, am I going to lose? Well, if you face five, what are the three things you're allowed to do? I can take one. If I take one, what's player two face? My, a four, but four is winning for him. So he would take three and then I would lose. All right, what? So one didn't work. Let's try two. If I took away two, where does five minus two go? Three, but three is a 
winning position for him. That didn't help me. I take three. What does it go to? Two. But two is a winning position for him. So it doesn't matter what you do. Take one, take two, take three. You put him in a winning position. Therefore, you are always going to lose. And we would have to show that. We would have three cases. We would have three cases. Player one takes one. Player one takes two. Player one takes three. But then player two gets four, hence P1 lose. But this would be P2 gets three, but that's a winning position for him. Therefore, player one lose. But we have to prove it. That's the thing is that we have to prove it. We just can't say it. That'd be assuming that the rule works. We have to prove the rule works. And so this means gets two, hence player one loses. Right? Do we see how this pattern is working? So what's going to happen is how do I prove this by strong induction? If I look at this, what is absolutely necessary to begin this process? What's the basis? The basis is going to have to be this entire block. One is a losing position. Two is sorry. One is yeah. One's a losing. Two's a winning. Three's a winning. Four's a winning. We know those things are true, right? The formula works for this beginning. I need four things to happen. So if I'm going to do this proof, if I want to show that. So the for all n is show that nim by take one, two, or three, we have the following. If n mod four is equal to one, this is, if it's equal to one, that means player one loses. If it equals zero, two, or three, Player one wins. And then proof. Basis. Show the formula above works for n equal to one, two, three, and four. That's exactly what I'm just copy and paste what I did, right? Why does it work for one? You take it, you lost. Why does it work for two? I take one and make the other guy lose, therefore I won. Why does it work for three? I take two. Do you catch the pattern? Sometimes I take one, sometimes I take two, sometimes I take three. To do what? To push him into a losing position. But I've done it at least for these first four numbers. Now, inductive. What we do is we're going to use strong. So I am going to assume P of n equal to 1 and P of n equal to 2 and everything up to P of n equal to K. And K is bigger than 4. All right, we're starting at 5, 6, that's where this is going. I assume that the rule works for all of those. I need to show that the rule works for P of n equal to K plus 1. So I'm assuming that for 1, 2, 3, all the way up to K, the rule's working, no matter what. And then I have to show this. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, if n is equal to k plus 1, what's the rule? The rule says I'm going to take this k plus 1 and I'm going to take mod 4. If I take mod 4, how many answers does this spit out? I don't know what k plus 1 is, right? But I know when I take mod, it's going to give me what possible answers? 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to have to handle each of those cases, right? 
So case number one, k plus one mod four is equal to zero. Now by my rule, what should that mean? That player one should win. How did he win? How's he going to win? We have all these head shakes. Let's go back to our example. Which one of those was a mod that spit out a zero? Four. Four. What did I do to make it into a winning position? Take three. Let's see if that works. Should work if the pattern says, like before when it was zero, I took away three. So let's take away three. So this is what I face. So player one takes three. If I do that, k plus one will become what? Player two is going to see k minus two mod four. What is that? Why is it equal to one? Okay, that, that's a k minus two, but we could sit there and say, okay, this is k plus one minus three mod four, right? What is k plus one equal to when I take mod four? Zero. zero. So this is going to go to what? Zero. So this is actually simply minus three mod four. What is that? One. Is everybody okay with that? It was zero, right? The k plus one was zero. I take away three, so I'm just going to take a minus three. So what does this person see? He sees a one. Now, this k plus one minus three is actually that k minus two, right? That's in here. In that area, the rule works, right? From k and below, the rule works. So since this is k and below, is k minus 2 in that area? Yes. By the inductive hypothesis, since this is k minus 2, I get a 1. The inductive hypothesis says it works. So what does it say? Player 2 is facing a losing position. So player 2 has to lose. Hence, P2 loses. Everybody okay with that? What would be case... Let's go on to number three, because case number two is what? It's k plus one is equal to one, right? The remainder could be one. Might as well do it. But what if k plus one mod four was equal to one? What should happen? I should lose, but how did I prove that before? How did I prove it under the basis? I took those three cases, right? I sat there and said, you know what? If you take a one, you leave the other guy a winning spot. If you take two, you leave the other guy a winning spot. If you take three, you leave the other guy a winning spot. I have to show this. So I'm going to have three sub cases. So 2A, let's take one. And then 2B, let's take two. And then 2C, we are going to take three. But that would, that would be just simply, I had my k plus 1, so this is what p2 gets. But then I take away 1, mod 4. What's k plus 1 congruent to? 1. And so this is really 1 minus 1, right? So it's just what? That's a 0. What, so player 2 sees a 0. What does that mean? He's going to win. That's a winning spot for him. What if I had k plus 1 minus 2 mod 4? What's k plus 1 congruent to? 
1. What's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. What's negative 1 mod 4? 3. It's a winning position for him again. What if I take away 3? k plus 1 minus 3 mod 4. k plus 1 is congruent to 1. What's 1 minus 3? Negative 2. What's negative 2 mod 4? 2. Winning position for him. Doesn't matter what you do. Take 1, 2, or 3. You're going to leave them in a winning position for player 2. So player 2 wins each time. So all of these are a P2 win. Therefore, P1 lose. It worked. The other ones, if you would look at this, you could actually do all three cases for each, right, if you wanted to. You could sit back up here and go and say, well, what if I take three? Well, take three is a win for you. Well, what if I take two? Then you're going to lose. So don't do it. Well, what if I take one? Oh, then you're going to lose. Don't do it, right? What happens is you always have a choice. You can take one, two, or three. It just happens that in case number one, case three, and case four of these possibilities of the modulus, right, those are, you have a possibility of winning. But for this guy, there is no possibility of winning. You're always guaranteed to lose. When you play this game, the hope would be what? If you actually played this in the real world, you would hope that you can count faster than the other person. Because you've got to figure out what mod 4 is of that as quickly as possible. If you can't tell, it's a big pile of stones. Start taking threes until it gets quickly down to, okay, I can count that amount. Like you take a three and kind of like shuffle it around and hopefully that it spreads it out so you can start counting faster than the other person. Because the first person can count will win. Is everybody okay with this? At least what you would do to finish? It's, it's time consuming, but what's nice about this? What's nice about this proof is it tells you how to win the game. Right? Game theory itself, which is, this is one of the pieces of it, it tells you the algorithm to guarantee this, this will win. When people sit there and say things like, could you beat, for example, could you beat a computer at NIM? Well, you wouldn't beat the computer. The question is, can you beat the programmer? The answer is, of course not. Why? Because he knows how many things are there always. And he has an algorithm that just simply says like this, no matter what you do, they'll do the appropriate thing. Right? And when you look at it, it's not, a, it's not actually a game. It's, a, it's just a system, right? And it will just simply follow the rules. That's not a game. That's just, it's like, oh, I lost against the computer. Not really. You're not playing a computer. It's just a function that you just didn't, you know, follow through on. It's one of the things that I always look at when they have, like, supercomputers beating world chess players and stuff like that. You have to realize he's not playing a supercomputer, right? What is this thing? It's an algorithm developed by programmers with thousands and thousands and thousands of chess players who create this entire tree to figure out what's the next best thing that you do. So you're not actually playing it. It's just a tree that it falls down. And if you make a mistake, just like on NIM, then you lost. All right. Any others? Why would this require the strong induction section rather than the weak induction section? Weak induction, it, you know, to, to declare it weak, right, it would say the only thing that's necessary for k plus 1 is the one right before it, the k. What do I notice in my proofs? To handle the k plus 1 here, to say that when I take 3, I needed to know that k minus 2 mod 4, right, being 1, it follows my rule. To prove the k minus 1, I didn't need the k, I need the k minus 2. Right? To prove this one, that k plus 1 minus 1, what does that use? k. What does this one use? k minus 1. What does this one use? k minus 2. So I needed to know all three of those previous to be able to prove it. So strong induction just simply says that I'm going to use more than just the neighbor right beside me. That's why this is in the strong induction section. Okay. 
So nothing. You guys can knock off proof.